Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a very casual, chatty get ready with me. I just wanted to sit down and film a look for you guys. I was wearing a look or this look in a couple of recent videos and I got a lot of comments asking me if I would film it. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm going to kick it off with the Catrice Prime and Fine Keep Me Matte Primer. I talk about this all the time on my channel but it's just a really nice smoothing primer. So in today's video, I'm going to use all older favorites. There's a couple of people on YouTube who film videos where they just use older favorites. I think Allie Glines films quite a few of them and she just calls it like a full face of nothing new. So I thought for today's video, I would shop my stash, pull out some older favorites, things that I haven't used for a while and use them in today's look. I know that new makeup is not high on the priority list for a lot of people right now, so hopefully this can inspire you to shop your stash, whether you have these products or something similar, and maybe just take advantage of some older products that you kind of forgot about. For foundation, I'm using my Fenty Pro Filter Soft Matte Longwear Foundation. I wear the shade 140, and then I am mixing it with the Smashbox Studio Skin 15 Hour Wear Hydrating Foundation, and I have the shade 105. These are pretty much opposite foundations. The Fenty foundation is more of a matte full coverage foundation and the Smashbox is more of a hydrating medium coverage foundation so I just find that they balance each other out really well. So how are you guys doing right now? I haven't had the chance to sit down and talk to you like face to face because I've been doing a lot of declutter videos and I'm so glad that you guys have been enjoying them. I was kind of debating whether or not I should do a declutter series on my channel this year. I feel like sometimes declutter videos are tough because they can come off the wrong way. I mean, they can look very wasteful. Obviously, if you have a lot of makeup and you're getting rid of things just to buy new products to fill the drawers back up again, I totally get it. But for me, I really have made such a big effort to cut back on buying new makeup. I've cut back on the PR that I receive. I'm actually on a no buy with a few specific products and it feels really good. So for me, I'm not necessarily decluttering just to buy a bunch of new products and fill my drawer up again. I do buy new makeup, I do try new products because I do film YouTube videos and reviews. But if you guys have been following my makeup journey over the past year or two, you know that I've made a big effort to cut back and not excessively hoard makeup. <laughs> You know, once a year, it is nice to go through and just remove products that I'm no longer using. Makeup preferences change all the time, and products that I used to love might not work well for me anymore. So anyways, I'm so glad that you guys have been enjoying those videos. I like watching declutter videos, honestly. So I hope that you guys are doing well. This is such a crazy, stressful, anxiety-inducing time. I've had the chance to talk to some of you guys on Instagram, through YouTube comments, and I know you guys are doing your best to hang in there. My husband and I have been so distancing. I actually had the stomach flu like two weeks ago. So I've pretty much been home since then, which honestly, this has been the longest two weeks of my life, but it's okay. Thankfully, my husband has been able to work from home starting yesterday. I'm filming this video on Tuesday and I'm hoping that it goes up on Tuesday night. But yesterday, Monday was the first day he was able to work from home. It's funny because a few years ago, we both used to work from home and we were with each other 24 seven. I think at that point we had been married for like three years but we were just together all the time and that hasn't been the case for a long time. So it's really interesting. It's obviously going well. His office is like in the room right next to me. So I'm sure you can hear me right now. I was like, put on your headphones while I film because normally when I'm filming, I'm the only one around, but it's weird when somebody else can kind of hear what you're saying. So anyways, it's going well so far, but it's only day two. For concealer, I'm going to use my e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer and I have the shade light sand. This one is a little bit light for me, but I feel like it will be fine. It just kind of works more so as like a brightening concealer. And this one is definitely a full coverage matte concealer. So it will stay in place all day long. Obviously, we are so incredibly thankful that we can work from home, that we can work at all right now. I know a lot of people either aren't able to work from home or aren't able to work at all. And I can't imagine the stress that those people, and I know even some of you guys must be feeling as your jobs are kind of up in the air, your income is kind of up in the air. And then of course there are the people who are able to work, but they have to go out and be among people every single day whether that is our healthcare professionals or people that are in other essential businesses. So if that is you, I'm thinking about you. Either way, it's such a stressful time. And I know that I've said this in another video, but it feels weird to talk about makeup during such a crazy time. And it's tough because, you know, part of me is like, maybe I should just take a break from filming YouTube videos. I don't wanna talk about something so frivolous, 
But at the same time, I know some of you guys have said that you've just enjoyed having a distraction like YouTube, and I love YouTube for that reason as well. It's just such a distraction from the craziness of daily life normally, but especially now when things are just so stressful and overwhelming. I've kind of taken a step back from reviews and new products because I just feel like that's not a priority for a lot of people. But that's why I did the declutter video, and I have a couple of other videos in mind relating to like shop my stash using products that we already have. So if that's something you guys would want to see, let me know. If there's anything else you want to see too, let me know because I do have some extra time. So I'm willing to film, you know, pretty much whatever <laughs> for the most part. So I am going to use the Urban Decay Velvetizer to set my under eye concealer. Thank you guys so much for telling me that this was on Holt Look. A bunch of you guys sent me messages on Instagram and it means so much that you guys thought of me because... If you did not know, I was kind of looking for this. I went to TJ Maxx a few weeks ago because I heard it was there and I couldn't find it. And I just haven't been able to find it online because I think they are discontinuing it. So a bunch of you guys told me that you found it on Hot Look and I did grab two of them. I think they had this little mini version available. And then when I was doing my declutter, I realized I actually still have like half of a full-sized jar left. So I think I'm set for a while. I'm still going to be looking for an alternative because if this product is discontinued, Obviously, I won't be able to keep getting my hands on it. This product isn't meant to be an under eye setting powder. That's not how they market it. They actually market it as a mix in medium that you can mix into your foundation to make things a little bit more velvety and smooth. But because it's such a lightweight, thin powder, I just find that it sets my under eye concealer really well. And it seems to lock it in place so much better than any other powder. So that's why I love to use it to set my under eye concealer. So for the face, I'm just going to use the Too Faced Peach Perfect Setting Powder. And I'm going to be using a damp sponge. This one is from e.l.f. It is their, I think it's called their Total Beauty Sponge. I'll link it below. I always list all of my brushes in the description box below as well. But I love using loose powder and sometimes pressed powder with a damp sponge because it just presses the powder into the skin so well. And it just locks things into place, but it doesn't give you that powdery look. I was kind of thinking about doing some sort of vlog. I uploaded my first like weekend vlog at the beginning of March and I was honestly so surprised by the fact that so many of you guys enjoyed it. It totally made my day because I was just kind of in the mood to film something different. Obviously I focus on beauty and that will most likely always be the focus of my channel because I do love makeup, I love trying products, I love reviewing things for you guys, but sometimes it's like you just wanna feel something a little bit different. So I did like a weekend in my life vlog and I was planning on doing them maybe like every other weekend just to switch it up, but then of course everything happened and I've just been at home. So I didn't know how interesting it would be if I was stuck at home. I'm not really doing anything that I feel like would be interesting to vlog. We are cooking a lot more. I hate cooking. It's like my least favorite thing in the entire world. But I feel like because we don't have a lot of other things going on, it's not as bad. I think when it comes to cooking for me, it's just such a long process when you make like a meal from scratch. And I'm somebody who just likes, like my attention span is very short. So when I'm cooking, I get bored very, very easily. It just feels really tedious. But I think because we don't have anything else going on at night, it hasn't been too bad because I don't feel like I need to get it done and get to something else. So we made like an at-home... Uh, when we were sick, we made like a vegan, not chicken noodle soup. It was like chickpea noodle soup. That was really good. It was just like a vegetable broth base. There were some vegetables in there, chickpeas, and then noodles. Of course, that was when the grocery stores were just so insane. So I just had like big, <laughs> big noodles to put in it. But I would have chosen something a little bit smaller if it was actually available. So I did use the Profusion No Budge Eyeshadow Primer, which has been one of my favorites. It's super affordable. I think it's a good alternative to the Smashbox, I don't know, what am I saying? The Urban Decay Primer Potion. I think I'm going to do my eyes and then I'll do my brows. So I'm going to be using the ColourPop Brown Sugar Palette. This is a little bit of an older palette, but it is one of my favorites. I'm just going to go in with the shade Chai and use that all over the lid. I always like going in with a matte shadow before I go in with anything else, just so everything else blends really easily. So if you guys do find yourself with some free time, what have you been up to? Have you been productive? Have you been organizing the house, decluttering, cleaning, working, or have you found yourself watching Netflix, you know, listening to audiobooks, whatever you need to do to kind of de-stress? 
I'm going to take the shade Jamocha and use that as a transition color and also kind of just blend it into the crease. I have found myself a decluttering makeup. That was something that I was kind of putting off, so I'm glad that I was able to get that done. I just finished it up yesterday. So I think altogether I'll have four or five declutter videos up total. I've been trying to upload them as like every other video, so that way they're not too far apart if you guys are interested in watching them, but also it's not the only thing up on my channel in case you're not into declutter videos. I was thinking about filming a couple of other declutter videos, maybe like a skincare declutter, a makeup brush declutter, because I've gotten some requests to do that. Other than that, I feel like the rest of my house is pretty decluttered. Back in January, we decluttered everything in our attic and in our basement, but we are actually pretty minimalistic. I don't know if you would know that about me just watching my makeup videos. I don't know if I would call myself a minimalist because I feel like... I guess it can mean all kinds of things, but we are pretty minimalistic. We don't have a lot of extra things because our house is pretty small. So even if we have like a couple of extra things, it feels very cluttery, but it did feel good to go through like our storage in the attic in the basement and get rid of everything we did not need. And then I made like a master list of everything that we have and where it's located in case we are looking for something. So we did that back in January, otherwise, I might have filmed it if I was doing it now. Okay, I'm going to go in with this dark brown shade in the outer corner and then blend that up into the crease as well. Something productive that I have been trying to do is working out at home. I took a little while off because obviously I was sick a few weeks ago and then, you know, everything happened and I was just feeling a little bit lazy. The reason why I actually signed up to work out at a gym a few years ago is because I am so bad when it comes to working out at home. I just need that outside accountability. I actually work out in like a small group setting with like a personal trainer. It's not one-on-one, -on -one, but there can be like three or four or five people there. So if you want to cancel and not get charged, you have to cancel the night before. So every morning when I wake up, like I have to go, otherwise I get charged and obviously they're counting on me being there. And I just feel like that pressure, which is good when it comes to something like that. Obviously with everything going on, my gym is not open at the moment and they are doing some online workouts, but you guys, I'm so bad when it comes to working out at home. I have a really fun workout option that I have been doing. I don't know if you guys have heard of the fitness marshal on YouTube. He is seriously so funny. He makes working out at home feel like fun. He does like dance cardio workouts and there's a bunch of them for free on YouTube to just like the songs on the radio. So it's really fun and upbeat. He's so entertaining. I actually put together a playlist with some of my favorites. If you do the whole workout, I think it takes maybe like 40 minutes, but it goes by so quickly because it's so much fun. But I'll link that playlist in the description box below if you guys are interested. You could totally create your own too. I just threw together like, I think 12 or 13 songs that I like, and I have like a couple of slower songs in the beginning for a warm up, some slower ones at the end for a cool down, and just a couple of my favorites. But I do love him. Okay, I'm going to go in with the shade Auburn, which is this color right here, and I'm just going to take my ring finger and place that all over the lid. I feel like this is a look that I would probably wear during the fall, or maybe the summer if I was going for more of like a smoky eye effect. It's not really my go-to makeup for the spring season. During the spring, I'm usually into like pinks and purples. I just filmed my everyday makeup drawer for spring, which should be up soon, and I chose, it was kind of like a shop my stash style as well. I mainly chose Oh my gosh, I didn't have coffee today. I feel like I've kind of been laying off the coffee quite a bit, which has felt good, but sometimes my brain is just like so jumbled. I mainly chose older favorites. I think I have like a couple of new products I'm testing out, but for the most part, I just shopped my stash for some of my springtime essentials. So that should be up soon. But again, during the spring, I usually wear lighter colors, but for some reason, I've just kind of been feeling like these warmer, smoky shades. I'm going to clean that up in a second because usually when I'm blending, I just kind of go crazy and then I go in and clean it up later. But first I'm going to line my eyes with the Urban Decay Perversion waterproof liquid liner. I have to do this off camera because I have to get so close to the mirror and the camera just won't focus on me. So I'll be right back. Okay, I applied my eyeliner and I just kind of cleaned things up just a little bit. How bad do my eyelashes look? I am going to have to give myself a break from eyelash extensions. I keep telling you guys that I'm going to do that and now I'm kind of forced to, <laughs> which is obviously okay, but 
they like I have a couple of eyelashes holding on still I don't really know how to remove them on my own I did that in the past like back in August I think I went on vacation and I didn't have time to get them filled before I left so while we were on vacation I tried to remove them myself with like a little bit of oil and some of them came off very easily but I ended up pulling out quite a few of my natural lashes so I think at this point I'm just going to wait for them all to kind of fall off on their own because I don't want to lose any more of my natural lashes than I have to I'm just going to go back in with this brown shade and kind of blend that on the lower lash line. I was actually supposed to go get them filled tomorrow, but of course we did cancel my appointment a while ago because we are social distancing. And then on top of that, all of the non-essential businesses in our area have been ordered to close. Something that our local restaurants have been doing is just offering gift cards. Some of them are even offering like a higher amount. Like if you pay $20, you can get like a $30 gift card. So if you do want to support local businesses, not just restaurants, like even the spas and clothing stores in the area, that might be a good way to do it. I had to take a break because I poked my eye with the eyeshadow brush. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> but I know uh, a lot of people are just looking to spend money on essentials right now, and that is completely understandable. If you are in a position where you want to help local businesses, but you are practicing social distancing, that might be a good way to do it. I've just seen a lot of them post that on like their Facebook pages. I'm going to use the Hourglass Arch Brow Volumizing Fiber Gel. I have the shade Dark Brown. I feel like I am almost out of this product. I really enjoy it. I have a feeling I might repurchase it. I like the ColourPop Brow Gel and I like this one, but this one's a little bit different. It's not quite as waxy as the ColourPop Brow Gel and I feel like it dries down a little bit more quickly. Okay, so while that dries, I'm going to be using the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencil in the shade Scorch. This is my favorite Urban Decay pencil. I use it every chance I can. It's just such a pretty color. It's like a bronzy gold, but it just looks gorgeous on the waterline. So I'm just going to apply this on the waterline and then also a little bit on the lower lash line. I like to take a little bit on the lower lash line and then kind of smudge it out. And I don't know, there's just something about this pencil that's so pretty. It's not like your typical bronze or gold. It just looks really beautiful. Okay, I'm going to fill in my brows. I'm just going to use the Urban Decay Brow Blade. So typically when I use this, I only use the ink stain side, at least in my YouTube videos, which I use to kind of touch up my brows after I fill them in. But I have been loving the pencil side just as much this year. So I just wanted to use this on camera as well. So what I do is just take the pencil and fill in the bottom of my brow and try to define the arch a little bit. Nothing too crazy, I just kind of follow my natural brow shape. And then I extend the tail quite a bit, usually to kind of line up with the outer corner of my eye because my brows aren't that long on their own naturally. And then I use the pencil to kind of fill in the majority of the brow just to darken things up a little bit. And then I try to define the front a little bit as well because they're not, again, as long as I would like them to be. So after I do all of that, I take the ink stain side, and this is the side that makes the biggest difference. Whenever you guys ask me like what I'm doing to my brows, this is the product that I really recommend because honestly, you could fill your brows in with any brow pencil. I have affordable brow pencils that I love as well, like the LA Girl pencil, but this ink stain side makes such a big difference. I feel like it kind of gives your brows a microbladed look without obviously the microblading. <laughs> you guys know that I've struggled with my brows over the years. It's always been so hard for me. So finding a product like this, that's like an all-in-one product really does make such a difference. And if you have pretty full brows and you just have like a couple of sparse areas, I still think you would enjoy this ink stain side. It really makes just the best difference. And then to finish up the eyes, I'm just going to go through my few eyelash extensions really quickly. And then I'm just going to take the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Mascara and apply this to my lower lashes and then just a little bit to the tips of my eyelash extensions to kind of blend everything together. I guess I should make it clear, I don't normally put mascara on my eyelash extensions. It's not great for them, but since they're in like this weird growing out phase, I'm just trying to blend things the best that I can. So for bronzer, I'm just going to use the balms that take home the bronze since I am using some of my older favorites. This is one that I do love. It is my go-to bronzer. And I'm just going to bronze things up a little bit. I wanted to ask you guys if you wanted to see a purchase or pass video. I know that, again, new makeup is not high on the priority list for a lot of people. And I'm not really looking to buy a lot of new makeup right now. But I still think it could be fun to talk about new makeup releases and just kind of what looks interesting, what doesn't. Either that or an anti-haul. If you need me to talk you out of makeup, I thought I could film an anti-haul. I thought that could just be fun. Honestly, I'm just not 100% sure what type of beauty content you guys wanna see. So please let me know in the comment section below. It would just be really helpful. 
I'm going to take the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in the shade Diffused Light, which is just a really lightweight brightening powder. And after I apply bronzer, I always take this product just to kind of blend the edges of the bronzer so it doesn't look so harsh. I'm just going to take a little bit of concealer to cover that freckle on my nose, which is what I do when I do a full coverage look, just so everything looks even. And I'll let that dry for a second. For blush, I'm using this Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette, so it comes with three different shades. I'm going to use the shade Surreal Glow, which was limited edition, unfortunately. I've used up quite a bit of this product. I mean, I haven't hit pan on it, but I think if I ever hit pan on a blush, it's going to be this one. I just love this color when I'm doing more of a warm toned look because it just gives your skin such a pretty natural flush. The Hourglass blushes are just my favorite. They look so pretty on the cheeks. They're incredibly natural and lightweight. And then again, I usually just take that diffused light powder and kind of blend everything out so it's not too harsh or intense. And then I'm going to go in with highlighter. And of course, I'm going to use Becca Champagne Pop. I'm trying to hit pan on this by the end of the year just to see if I can do it. Highlighter seems to last forever and I've never hit pan on one ever. And I feel like I have to be getting close. I'm just not very heavy handed when it comes to cheek products because I just prefer more subtle cheek products. So I think that's why I have such a hard time hitting pan on this, even though I've used it for what feels like forever. And then I'm just going to take a little bit and apply that in the inner corner just to brighten things up a little bit. All right, let's finish up with the lips. I'm going to be using the Christian Audette Lip Liner in the shade Smooches. This is the shade that Mel Thompson created. She created four different lip products, two different lip liners, and two lipsticks. The lipstick in Beauty is one of my absolute favorites. I also like the lip liners in Smooches and Kitten. And then I haven't worn the shade Puffin too much. It's like a bright orangey red, but I'm really excited to incorporate that into my routine for the springtime. And then for lipstick, the other day I pulled out this Ofra Long Lasting Lipstick in the shade Verona. This is kind of what inspired my entire makeup look when I was wearing it the other day. This is just such a pretty color. It's like a deeper nude and I wear a lot of light nudes on my channel but I used to really love dark lip colors so I've kind of been in the mood to pull them back out again even though we're heading into spring. Let me stop talking and just apply this. Okay, that is the final look. If you guys aren't into like such a dark lip color, you could totally wear like the Fenty Lip Gloss in the shade Fenty Glow, or honestly any nude lip or even a deeper, darker, dramatic lip. So that is the end of my video. I hope you guys enjoyed today's Get Ready With Me. I really just wanted to sit down and chat with you guys, see how you're doing, check in with you, and maybe hear from you about which videos you wanna see on my channel over the next few weeks. But thank you guys for watching today's video. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay indoors if at all possible, and I'll see you guys very soon with a new video. Bye.